With practice and mental preparation, this tutorial will teach you step by step how to do windmills. But you gotta focus. Be sure to warm up before practicing. Flexibility does help with this move. The seated straddle is a great stretch to help develop flexibility for the windmills. Also, any stretches that help the wrists, the legs, the shoulders are recommended. With that being said, let's get started with the prerequisites. Honestly, to learn windmills, you don't really need any prerequisites other than being in general shape and in my opinion, a simple backspin. But we're gonna learn a simple backspin right now because it's one of the steps in learning a windmill. So let's get started learning windmills. Step number one, you're gonna choose a way that you wanna spin. Imagine a clock on the ground. I spin towards my left shoulder, that's counterclockwise. A lot of people like to spin clockwise. So if you like to spin the other way, then just use opposite arms and legs that I describe in this video. But if you're spinning counterclockwise, you and me are alike. Before we learn the windmill, we need to learn the backspin. And before we learn the backspin, it's beneficial to learn the butt spin. It's a lot easier and will help us learn how to channel our momentum into a circle. So sit down on your butt on the ground. I'm placing my left hand down because I go counterclockwise. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to kick my right leg out past my left leg and then as I bring my left leg in, this is going to create that momentum. Simultaneously pushing off the ground with my left arm as I bring my left leg in after throwing my right leg over. This creates the momentum. Sounds like a lot's going on, but it's really easy. Just pay close attention. When you initiate your spin, tighten your core, bring your knees to your chest. You'll notice that you spin faster when you bring it in closer. Bring it in, pull it out, just experiment around with this. This will really help you understand the whole momentum concept when it comes to these b-boy power moves. And honestly, is the key to learning more advanced movements. So with that being said, let's learn a slightly more advanced movement, the backspin. So all we're going to be doing to turn this butt spin into a backspin is you're actually going to roll on your back roll on your back after you kick not straight down the middle per se but actually on a diagonal to the upper shoulders this helps the movement be a lot more smooth and makes it more comfortable to spin on the ground on your back so just practice the simple roll from opposite leg to opposite shoulder the leg towards the way which you are spinning so as you remember i'm spinning counterclockwise so i'm going towards my left leg so i'm going from my left leg to my right shoulder now all you need to do is the same kick and push that you did for the butt spin, but roll from the opposite leg to the upper shoulders, and you'll be in the backspin position, spinning on your back. Bring your knees to your chest, you'll notice you spin a little bit faster, a little bit tighter. Practice this a few times, get at least like one spin, and then you're ready to move on. All right, we're gonna take a break from our backs and move to our front. You're gonna learn the simple turtle freeze. You wanna take the arm towards the way you spin, so I go counterclockwise, so I'm taking my left arm, you're going to bring it in, tuck it in, armpit tight, and then bring it in towards your belly button. Now what you want to do with the other arm is you want to put it out in front to the side. It can be around the shoulder height, anywhere that's comfortable for you. Then you want to tighten the core and get on the ground in this position, but keep your toes on the ground for now, just like that. Before we take our feet off, we want to learn the simple drop in motion with the arms. This helps us roll to our shoulders in the windmill and helps us understand the movement. So since I spin towards my left, I'm actually going to pull my left arm in and push away with my right arm. So that's gonna help drop me down to my shoulder smoothly. So get in the turtle freeze position. Take your left leg, put it underneath your right leg. Then you're going to flex your left arm so that you roll down onto your upper shoulder and roll sideways. So left arm tighten the body, left leg under the right leg, tighten the left arm, roll, push slightly with your right hand away. Try to roll on your upper shoulders, although it might not look pretty because your feet are still on the ground for now, but that is perfect because you are learning the arm motion for the windmill. You can even increase the speed a little bit. Now we're going to learn this from the turtle freeze without our toes touching. So you want to get into the turtle freeze position, lean forward, you can even touch your head, and lift your toes off the ground. If you need to bend your legs a little bit at first, it's okay. Try to do this comfortably for at least a few seconds. So just like before, you're gonna wanna take your left leg and try to put it underneath your right leg, but you wanna do it this time without your toes touching. So in order to do so, you might wanna rotate a little bit more at the hips and keep those legs tight. Everything else is the same. You're going to flex the left arm, bring it in close, roll to the upper shoulders, push away slightly with the right arm. 
Work on this and try to make it smooth. All right, you're almost there. Now we're just gonna go back to our back and we're gonna learn how to turn our momentum over so we can get back up. And then we're gonna tie it all together and you're gonna be windmilling around town. It's gonna be awesome. So just like before, I'm gonna be rolling from my left leg to my right shoulder. You want to have your left arm in the turtle freeze position. Your right arm, however, you actually want to be tucked in. Think about an invisible ramp from your right forearm to your left palm. So when you roll over, it's smooth. It helps you get up gradually. And then after that, that's when you open your right arm up and push away. Look very carefully at the right arm. First, it allows me to roll up into my turtle freeze position, and then it opens up and it helps me push into a second windmill. All right, so now you basically know it all, so let's do it all, but let's do it all slow, so let's keep our feet on the ground at first, just so you can get used to what's going on. Start as if you were going to do a backspin, roll from your left leg to your right shoulder, keeping your legs out solid. Notice how I'm not drastically folding my legs or anything like that, just a very subtle twist of the hips. Using your right forearm so you can roll up the ramp to your left arm in the turtle freeze position, you can put your feet down in these early steps. Collapse the left arm, roll onto the left shoulder, keep the legs tight, hips tight, and you just did your first hacked mill. Yeah, your feet were touching, but don't worry, in just a second we're going to get those feet off the ground. Alright, so here's a little exercise that's going to help you get over to your arms without your feet touching. A simple little hip pop like this. I want you to do the roll from the opposite leg to the opposite shoulder as you were going to do a windmill. But when you go up to your shoulders, you want to pop your hips a little bit like this. When you eventually do windmills full speed, you're going to be doing this. It'll be a little more subtle, but it's a good idea to exaggerate and practice this, especially if you are having trouble getting over to your arms without touching your feet. This is the secret. This is the key. Now, all together for your first windmill over and out. Start as if you were doing a simple backspin. But when you get to your upper shoulders, you want to turn over. You do this by giving yourself that simple hip pop like I just showed you, combined with first letting your legs getting a little bit in front of your upper body and then jumping your upper body in front of your legs, rolling onto the ramp you create with your right forearm and your left palm. And then once you get in the turtle freeze position, you allow your legs to meet up with your upper body and then lead ahead, pulling you back into your second windmill. It might sound complicated like a lot, but all you're really doing is you're continually generating momentum by allowing your legs to slightly get ahead of your upper body, then jumping in front of your legs with your upper body, and then allowing those legs once again to whip back and get ahead of your upper body. Continuing that on and on and on, that's how you get momentum, that's how you continue the windmills over and over and over. When doing windmills, using your head in the turtle freeze position can help. So if you are going to use your head to ramp up onto, just be sure you don't slam it. Go smoothly. Now, to do continuous windmills, all you have to do is think about keeping that momentum flowing. It's as simple as that. A piece of advice I have for people learning this is don't think about it as like one, two, three, four, five windmills. Just think about it as one continuous motion. You're just trying to keep that momentum going and going and going by getting those legs in front of the upper body, then bringing the upper body over in front of those legs, and then whipping, and then so on and so on and so on. Keeping your whole body tight, by that I mean you know, flexing the abs, keeping the arms tucked in, having those legs out, you're controlling all your muscles, you're feeling where everything's at. Also notice, once I really get going, I'm not really pausing too much in the turtle freeze position. In fact, I'm actually just pushing my way through. This will totally happen once you get that feeling for the momentum down. You'll be able to control it any way you want, even be able to go into no-handed mills if you choose to do so. And the secret to developing that momentum is literally all the way in the beginning when we started practicing those butt spins. If you can understand that, you'll understand how to use that to help your mills get faster, snappier, prettier, and eventually you can have barrel mills, munch mills like this, any other form you want. It's all about practice. So in a full recap, my lower body is getting slightly in front of my upper body, then right when I jump over to my face, I get my upper body just a little bit in front of my lower body, then I whip my lower body back around. Rolling to the back, up to the shoulder, up to the front, up to the hands. You just keep it going like that. And that's how you go from nothing to a simple butt spin to windmills, step by step. 
I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching. More videos coming out. Don't forget to subscribe. Peace, you all have a good one, and I'll see you in the next video.